Hi, this is Joe Bullet, and today we're going to continue on with our VisualBasic.net text editor project. And what we're going to focus on in this lesson is the save file dialog component that we're going to add to our form, and then we're going to set the properties of that save file dialog. Then we're also going to look at saving the file as a new file, and also saving it as a different type of file if we want with the save as command. So we're going to focus on those in this lesson. So let's get into our uh, Visual Studio and begin to add those components to our text editor. Okay, I have the text editor up on the screen and we're in the Windows Form dialog. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the toolbox and I'm going to pin it so I can see everything. And what I'm going to add is the Save File dialog component over here. And I can drag it and drop it but it'll end up nevertheless in the component tray, so I'm just going to double click on it. And there it is. And we'll see it's highlighted right now. And we'll see there are a number of properties related to this as we go through and look at it. We're going to set these in our code instead of setting it at design time. So we'll get into our code and look at that process. Okay, let's go into our code. And we've got our component on place. Let me stop first and talk about the documentation. Uh, our documentation is located out at uh, pastebin.com. And you'll see that at pastebin.com slash u slash jboh. And you'll see some of the other links to this particular tutorial on this pr project. Now let's take a look at our uh, process of actually dealing with a saving of file. One of the things we want to deal with is the fact that we're going to have possibility of uh, errors related to not being able to access a drive for some reason. Uh, or we might have permission errors, security issues. So what I've done, and we did this in the last lesson, uh, is talk about the system I.O. and the system security import statements. So if you haven't done so, you need to get those into our project on that. That'll take care of uh, making our code a little bit easier as we code the information. Also in this particular process we're going to de be dealing with a couple of uh, declared private variables, one of which particularly we're going to be looking at the working path file variable which is a string. It will contain not only the path but the file that we're saving our uh, text box information from uh, and uh, so we'll have a name for that and right now, since we are not processing it, it's as empty string. So let's come on down to our area. And what I'm going to do is hit the um, Control Alt K key. And that's going to bring up my task uh, window area. And you'll see that uh, my to do list is, uh, has all those little to dos. And I'm just going to click on the to do list for uh, the save file option. And there I am in that spot. Well, first of all, I'm going to take this out now because we're going to be working on it. And I'm going to be bringing in the code for that. And so I'm going to grab real quickly the code I've already done uh, for this particular spot. And I'll bring it on over. We'll paste it in with a Control V. And uh, that'll get us started. Now, you'll see that the save file right now is not being coded, and we're going to deal with that in a minute. But let's talk about what we're doing in this particular part of the code. As we hit the save off the uh, menu strip or tool strip, both these click events will come into this procedure. And what we're going to do is look at the working path file. And if it is not a string empty, uh, we have a valid uh, file to save. Uh, and we also want to check, though, that that working path file ends with a TXT or an LOG extension. Uh, if we do, we'll go ahead and go into the save file procedure that we're going to add in just a minute. Otherwise, we may not have a valid working path file, and we want to do a save as. So we're going to uh, code as if we had clicked on the save as tool strip menu item uh, and go into that procedure. So let's come on down to the Save uh, As option, and I'm going to take that out as well. Okay, let me bring in the code for that part. And the Save As 
I'm pulling in. You can bring it over here, drop it in place with the Control V, and clean up my code a little bit. Here, where we come in to the save as, we're going to use the save file dialog. And here's where we use the with statement because we're going to set some of the properties of the save file dialog. And what we're going to do is use that file filter command that we also used on our open. And let me go back up to the top. We've defined our file filter to be with plain text, log files, and end in LOG, or we'll allow the user the option to use all files. But we want to uh, make certain we queued up the file filter for our save uh, file dialog. So I come down here and I set the filter on that. I also want to set the default extension to the text extension on that, so I've set that. Now, if I do not have a working path file and it's empty, I'm going to make a default file name called document.txt. The user can change this, but at least we'll have a default name initially for how they might see uh, information in the uh, save file dialog uh, window. Also, we're going to use the working path for our initial directory. And once again, that initial path was uh, determined up at the top when I started in declaring things that I'm going to be using the special directories my documents folder to start out with however it may change as we move around uh, saving uh, files and opening files so our initial directory is set as well in the save as section on that so that'll cue the um, window to the right area if we do not have, if we do have a uh, valid Windows path file, then what I'm going to do is take that and use the path uh, get file name method to get the file name only, and then also I want to set the uh, directory to the initial directory. So I don't know what I'll have here at the time, based off of maybe the last file I opened. Uh, it might be different than the My Documents folder, but I'll take this and strip off the file part and get just the directory for the initial directory. So we'll have everything set, the file name and initial directory, through these lines of code. Then I'm going to take the Save File Dialog and do a Show Dialog method. And if uh, the user clicks on a valid file and basically returns the dialog result OK, then I'll have at that time a valid file name. And so I come back with my valid file name and I reassign it back to the working path file. It'll have both the path as well as the file name. Then I'll come into the save file routine that I'm going to code just in a few seconds. So both of these come in based off of the information they have and go to the save file section. If I don't have a file name, though, we were going to go into the save file as and use the dialog window to determine uh, what we're going to be saving in the name, and then we're going to go into the save file area. So now let's code in the actual save file procedure uh, to this one, and I'm going to come back and get my copy paste on that. And here I grab the code, and this one is where we want to make certain when we're doing things that we watch out for the possibility of an error in our save file. Since we're doing a um, IO activity, there could be an error. So what I'm using is the try catch in try block to catch any errors that might happen. And the error mainly will happen when I do the write all text uh, method for the file system uh, class. So here we have our working path file coming in. That's the name of the file we're going to be saving based off of what we determined with our save dialog or what we had previously. Then we're going to take the data from my text box, take the text property on that, and I'm not going to append. I'm going to always overwrite so that I have a, a fresh uh, copy from beginning to end. At that point, once I have saved that uh, file to disk, or to a flash drive, uh, I want to set the modified property to false because basically I have it captured and now the data I'm working with in the editor is now pristine again in a sense. 
Then I'm going to set my focus back to the text box so my cursor is ready to go. But before I leave the module, I want to get the working path uh, based off of what I ha had. And so I'm going to, at this point, use the path get directory name to get the working path. Also, I'm going to change the caption in my main form so that uh, it has the application name uh, with a dash uh, concatenated to it and the actual file name by using the path get file name. So I've changed the caption area of my form. And me.txt means I'm working with the current class uh, uh, text property. In this case, it's the main form uh, that we're working with. Now you'll see as we come into the catch statements, um, if I have an error somewhere in my write all text method, I'll be catching first more specific errors and then going to the general error as just exception. So one of the errors we'll most likely have is a I.O. error of some sort. Maybe the uh, disk is not available at the time or maybe it was on a CD-ROM and I can't read it in. Uh, also, I might have permission errors and things dealing with security. And so these are the two that I always code in for the file kinds of activities. And then the general exception where I don't know exactly what I'll get, but if there's any other kind of error other than the I.O. exception or the security exception, uh, I'll get that. Now, just to remind you, the I.O. exception and the security exception, we coded in on that import statement to make it a little bit easier to code in up here at the top where we had the system I.O. and system security. So it makes it a little bit easier coding when I come down to the area where I'm actually dealing with the save. So we've got that coded in. Uh, it's very much like the get file on that. We're doing it in a try-catch block. The difference is it's a read-all text method. Now we're using the, uh, for the save file, we're using the write-all text method on that. But what, again, we're including it in the try-catch block to catch our errors. So we've got those coded in. And what I also want to bring to your attention before we run this is to take a look at our documentation for this one. And I want to bring up on the screen the documentation. Uh, you'll see the location for the code that we're working with out at Pacemen. And you'll also see the uh, main form image out there at Imager. And uh, if you want to see other uh, videos, they're also out at YouTube. So stop your uh, video at this point and write these down if you want to go out and check them out at Pacebin. And you can bring in the code that I'm working with today. Okay, let's give it a try and see how well we can save things. So let's compile our code. And for that, I'm going to make this screen a little smaller here and then do a compile. And it's compiled. First of all, let's do an open and get something in. And I'm going to bring in just something out here. Uh, I'm going to go to my quotes area. And I'm going to bring in uh, Henry David Thoreau's statement. Uh, so we pulled it in with our file open uh, dialog. And we have it in here. And I can edit things uh, at this point. Let's say I wanted to uh, say something like, I really like this and so I've edited it and changed it and at this point I want to save it so it does have a file name so if I hit the save now uh, because it has a file name it'll save it right away and I'm going to hit, hit the save button or I could hit the file uh, save here and we'll see it's uh, quickly saved we won't really know that now I'm going to hit new to clear it out and we'll reopen the file. So I'm going to go back out and bring it back in. And this time I'll go up here, grab it, and you'll see that I have, in fact, written it out to the disk. There it is. Now let's say I want to save it as something else. Now uh, perhaps I want to bring in some other information. Um, really like this. Um, make sure to use it. Okay, now I'm going to do a file save as. So I'm going to come up to my menu and do a file save as. And here's where I can change that. It'll default to the name that's already there. But if I didn't have a name, I could change it at this time. 
Also, you see I defaulted to plain text, but I could change it to a log file or go to some other extension uh, using all files on that. So uh, it will save, though, as a text file, no matter how we save it. Uh, that's how we have coded it. So it will be a text file, and you don't want to save a file that's not really a text file because um, it will destroy that file in its original form. But we can save new things as plain text or log files. Okay, let's go to a creation of a new one. And this time I'm going to run it uh, with the uh, uh, and cancel this. And we're going to start with a brand new file. And it's going to ask, do I want to save my changes? And I'm going to say no. And now we're just going to say, hi there. And there is no um, title uh, at uh, the top in our area. And I'm going to hit save. At this point, we should uh, get a prompt for document.txt. And there it is, document.txt. We're doing a save as because it hasn't had a file name yet applied to it. And so we can save it out there as just a document.txt or change it to something new. So we've coded into our uh, code now um, the information about how to save a file by using the save uh, file dialog uh, in our properties. And we just code it very simply. Uh, if we're going to uh, save it, we're going to, uh, and we already have a valid working name, we're just going to issue a quick save. Otherwise, we're going to go to do a save as to get a name with the dialog file. We come in, get the dialog file information, get the working path file. Then either procedure will bring us ultimately to the save file procedure where we go out and save the file. Remember, though, that we need to keep it in a try-catch block to catch for any possible errors during our run. Well, we're doing real well. We're moving right along in our process of creating our uh, text editor. We're bringing in the file. We can modify it and then save it out. We can save it as a log file, as a text file, uh, or we can save it as another file type, but it will still be saved as a text file format uh, using the Unicode uh, uh, type format. But uh, right now, we've got a really good part of the uh, working of our text uh, file editor working. And now we're going to add a few more things. We're going to do the uh, file exit uh, procedure. And you'll see in our next video how simple that is. So until next time, get your hands dirty in the code. Go out to pastebin.com and get the code and look at it, study it. Go out to MSDN and take a look at some of the commands especially the file system write all text to see how uh, that one works and especially look at the possible exceptions that that will throw the the IO exception the permission exceptions for security uh, so take a look at those commands and uh, meanwhile get your hands dirty in that code and have fun and see me next time give me thumbs up if you like it take care